Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're going to be going on a journey to try to get some treasure. We're going to be going to the Frosted Mountains. It's going to be cold, but we're looking for some money there. We're going to be going to the Tangled Jungles. Looks scary in there. And then we're going to be going to Lava. Man, is it hot worth all this treasure? And we're then going to be finding treasure and avoiding goblins. Let's take a look at Treasure Hunter. This is from Queen Games. This is from the designer Richard Garfield. What? You've never heard of Richard Garfield? Ever heard of Magic the Gathering, King of Tokyo, amongst a million other great games? Anyway, two to six players, plays in about 45 minutes. This is a card drafting game, family style. Let me show you. Treasure Hunters played over five rounds where you're going to be drafting cards and trying to go to different locations and get good points. You'll also be fighting off some goblins. Let's tell you how it works. Now at the beginning of every round, everybody's going to get nine cards. Now these will be secret, no one else can see them. And a lot of these cards are going to be uh, people in different locations. So the blue cards are the Frosted Mountains. And you'll see that there's different artwork for the different cards there. Now you may see some red cards, which are the lava. And you might see the green cards, which are tangled jungles. Now each of these locations have cards ranging from 1 to 12, and there's one card of each of those. There's also some cards that have coins on them, and there's also some cards that have watchdogs. We'll talk about what all these do later. Now what you do on your turn is simply draft cards. So you're going to select one card from your hand, and then you are going to basically pass them. So let's say I keep this, I put it face down in front of me, I'm going to take all these cards, put them face down, and pass them to my player to my left. I am then going to receive those cards from the player to my right. I will look at them. I will select one of them face down. I'll pass those. And this will continue going in a cl uh, clockwise direction for the first round until I basically have nine total cards. Now, what we do is after everyone's drafted the nine cards, we start at the first location, Frosty Mountain. And basically everybody just throws down all of the cards that they have for the Frosted Mountain. So once the players have placed their cards down, let's say the first player, they play all of them. So let's say the first player just has one that's a 12. The second player plays a seven and a five. And the third player, let's say, plays a four. So after this is done, starting with the dealer, uh, they can play some special action cards, which, which can help them, um, you know, manipulate their numbers. If nobody played any action cards right now, we would look at this and say, okay, look, the one who has the maximum highest number is going to get this treasure. And this player has a 12, and this 7 and 5 is also 12, but when in a tie, whoever has the higher number gets it. So this player would get the max, this player would get the minimum, and this player gets nothing in the middle. So that's typically how it would work. But let's say there, there were some action cards played, like for example, maybe this player here, played a flaming sword, which gives them a plus four to any color. So now they have 16. Oh, well, once somebody plays a card, everyone else can also play a card. So maybe this player says, well, I have a times two uh, in, in, the, in the frosted mount. So this is actually 24. And maybe it ended there. So this person would get this. And again, once again, this player would get this. This player kind of wasted his card. He was trying to get higher, but didn't know he had that. And that's how that round would work. Now there's other special cards that you can use. For example, there's some that will sleep in beauty. It will cancel out one of your guys. So if you want one of your guys gone, because maybe you're gonna end up getting a minimum a, a bad a bad tile there, that can be used too. You can add a plus eight, but you have to give up three gold to do so. You could send a minus two to one character uh, to you know to the characters of any color. Uh, and you can also even do a mystery mule, which allows you to draw a random card off the top. And if it's from the same color, like this, you could add it to your, to your green pile when you're doing the jungles. So those are some of the special cards that you can play during this. Now, as you can see, the maximum isn't always what you want, because these are randomly put out during the game. So whoever has the most of this is going to get the minus 8. Now, these tiles range from minus 8 to 20. I put the, the littlest and the highest in, the, in here so you can see the range and everything in between. So nobody's going to want high numbers of green when they're drafting. Someone's going to get stuck with this and this. And you do the final thing, which is the lava, and it works the same way. Everyone throws their cards down. Maybe there's some special actions. And the, the, the highest number would get this, and the lowest number would get this. 
Now we started the goblins here after that, and this is holding the goblins at bay because while you're out gathering treasure, the goblins are back at your place stealing all the treasure you've gotten before. Now, before this round starts, if someone has one of those mystery mule cards, they can pull them out to try to grab some watchdogs from the top of the deck. But before that, uh, after that, essentially everyone's gonna throw down their watchdog cards. So let's say one player throws down a watchdog of two and one, and another player throws down one, and the third player has none. What happens is, see, this, these goblins need a watchdog of one, one, or three to fight them off. So the player that did not throw down any watchdogs did not fight off any of these goblins, and they must pay the amount of coins here. So two here, one here, and one here. Now this player had one, so he's able to fight off this and this, but not this because this needs three, so he has to pay one. This player has three, he's able to fight off all of them. Now whoever has the most gets to grab all of these tokens and all the money that were stolen and take it from the goblins. Now if there's ever a tie, there's little initiative numbers here and whoever has the highest number wins. So this player would be able to take all these coins and he'd get to take all the goblins and flip them over because at the end of the game, they're all worth a coin. So basically he just got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight money, which is essentially points at the end of the game. Now at the beginning of the round, I mentioned there's one other secret card you can play, a special card in your hand is a scare goblin. And this basically says when you play this, you won't own the goblins any money no matter what. And after the goblins, we go to coins. Now any player that wants to, they have coin cards, they throw them down and they will get that many coins. In this case, this player would throw down those two cards and they would simply get three coins. At that point, if you have any cards you haven't used, special ability cards, you can discard them. And then we go to the yellow magic scroll round. Now see, most of the tiles that you saw so far were points and I put them there for purpose reasons, but there's other tiles that are mixed all these tiles are basically treasure tiles that get put out on the board at the beginning of each round. And most of them have points, but some of them are special scrolls. And at this point in the round, anybody that has one of these can use them. And when you gather these, you win them the same way you'd won these in the frosted uh, mountains or the jungle, the lava. These are yellow scrolls that you can use any time in the game. You don't have to use them the round you got them. You can use them before the end of the game. And this basically says you could turn this in and for every watchdog card you played, you'd get three coins or uh, every, uh, essentially you had gotten a certain amount of coins this turn. I had just gotten three. If I did this, I'd get another three. There's also some that actually times it by two and I would have gotten six more coins in addition to the three I had just gotten. This one says at the end of the game for every one of these goblins you had killed, you get two coins. Uh, this one is any green cards that you've played that round, the, the, the jungle cards, you get three coins for each of those. And this one is any color uh, warrior cards, you'll get three coins if they're numbers 10, 11, 12. And there's a bunch of them that kind of act like this, but they get used whenever you want. So you can get one this round, this one, and then next round play to this to try to turn it in. That would be the end of the round. We would move this token up and now we'd be drafting to the right. So you go left, right, left, right, left through the five different rounds. This isn't the real token that you put here. I just can't find it. So I'm using a coin. Uh, and then, so everything would fill back up. We start a new round. We're gonna be drafting to the right. New goblins come out, new treasures would come out. We'd shuffle all the cards, give everybody nine cards, start again. And this will continue to the end of the five rounds. And at the end of the fifth round, essentially you take the board and you just flip it over and it becomes the scoreboard. And everyone then takes a colored card here of this. So maybe if you want to be yellow, you would do this. You'd put one of these in front of you that's yellow and this would be your score. This helps you keep score at the end of the game. And also keep in mind, any of these yellow special tiles, if they're not used by the end of the game are worthless. And at the end of the game, we would, uh, there's some special silver tiles that give you money for how many of these goblins you've killed. You'd do that. You'd add up the points of the goblins themselves. You'd add up these, you'd add up your money and whoever has the most at the end is the winner. Now there's a two player variant for this since it's a drafting game. You still get nine cards, but each player also gets a draw pile of nine cards in front of them. And before they select their card, they pick one card up from, from the draw pile. Then they select which card they're gonna keep. Maybe they keep this one. And then they decide one to discard. Maybe they discard this one out of the game. And then they take these and they pass it. And that just continues all the way down until they have nine cards. And that's how you play Treasure Hunter. Now I was interested in this because A, Pedigree, Richard Garfield, anything he touches I pretty much want to play. Queen Games always puts out good family style games with awesome components, great artwork. And this is no different. First of all, components and artwork. It is fun, cartoony art. 
All the cards have original artwork on them. They look great. Even between the, you know, the frost, let's say the frosted mountains, for example, all the cards have different numbers. They're all different characters and they look quite different between each of the scenes. The artwork's awesome. It's that cartoony family fantasy style. I'm not typically a fan of fantasy style games, but in this, in this case, it's very light and cartoony and I can really get with it. And like usual, the components are awesome in this. Gameplay. This game is excellent. It's probably one of my favorite drafting games for a medium weight game now. Now, I wouldn't say this game is a gateway game. It's not like, say, Sushi Go, but it's not like Seven Wonders either. I would slot it right in the middle of those two between Sushi Go and Seven Wonders on the rate of complexity. A little similar to, say, the weight of, I'd say, uh, from Yellow earlier, Medieval Academy was a family style drafting game that was good for new people, but also good for gamers. This game might have replaced that for me because this, and I thought very highly of that game, but this, oh man, it's streamlined. It's, it's drafting, right? You can, you can have a lot of players and drafting is fun and it's quick. It's simultaneous. You're going like this, you pass on the card, you're trying to figure out what to get. I love how every round and every game is going to feel totally different depending on A, what cards you get, what cards are actually in the pile because not all of them are in there that, that, that round in people's hands and what treasures are there. Like, sometimes there'll be neg two negatives on something and nobody wants it. You'll end up like, it's passing it around. It's like Old Maid. Who's gonna get stuck with the Frosted Mountains? Because, you know, those are all negative this turn. Or then there's like two great things. There's like a plus 20 and a plus 14 on, on, on the lava. And everyone's trying for lava. And it's like weird, you're trying to slot yourself right, but at the same time, you're not just doing that. You're like trying to look out for coins and you're trying to look out for these special, you know, scrolls. Maybe you've got something from early in the game that says, hey, Every red card you've played is three points, uh, three coins. And so like, hey, this is the round. I got a lot, there's a lot of red cards out there. I'll just start strategy this round to grab a bunch of red stuff, throw those down and, and cash in. Maybe it's, maybe I, there's a ton of coins out there and I have the reigning coins that lets me double my coins when I, when I pass it in from an earlier round. I'm just gonna hoard coins and try to get stuff. There's so many things you could do. Which treasure do you go for? Do you not go for any treasure? Do you go for all the coins? Do you just go for the one of the special tiles? Do you just like gang up on the goblins hoping that other people can't afford them because you're taking all the watchdogs and you get everyone's coins and those and then maybe you have the 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 shield the the the, the the spell that allows you to get points for those at the end of the game. I like it. It's simple, it's streamlined, it's easy, yet it's got a bite to it. It's got a good strategy level of depth. Drafting is fun. Woof, I can't say enough of good things about this. This is an excellent, excellent family style drafting game that you can probably teach to new gamers. Wouldn't call it gateway, maybe a next step game, uh, but gamers are gonna like it too. So you could probably bring people in from the Sushi Goes into this as a next step and you're gonna have a lot of fun with it too. Excellent game, 45 minutes. Oof, I loved it. Uh, this one's gonna be staying in my collection for a while, and since it is coming into my collection, into my library, let's uh, induct it properly with a saxophone serenade.